there are things there are that, that we experience but never talk about. A shadow shining in a corner, flickering of the light, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your evidence, because this isn't just your story, this is our story. This is Ghost Box. And welcome to Ghost Box Live Experimental Sessions. My name is Greg Bach, and I thank you very much for joining me tonight. It's been uh, it's been a little while. I didn't I wasn't on Sunday, so uh, I was going to do it last night, but it just didn't arise. So it's good to be on. We're going to do something a little bit different tonight, though. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about that in a second. As usual, though, a couple bits of house cleaning I want to get through real fast. First of all, can you share out this video, please? Can you let other people, other groups know that we're on? and uh, take part in what we're doing tonight. We have a guest tonight, and it's gonna be a little bit different format than normal, and that's fine. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I, I'd love to have other people share it out, if at all possible. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Also, uh, as I always say, uh, feel free to please check out my Patreon, and my Patreon uh, information is right there, and uh, the, uh, Subscriptions start as low as uh, uh, two bucks a month. So if you feel moved that you like what we're doing here, please share this out. I would greatly appreciate it. Please join my Patreon. Every little bit helps. It goes towards uh, going to the locations. It goes towards uh, hosting uh, uh, the radio show, all that stuff. And so if you like what I'm doing, please consider doing so. I would really appreciate it. Or if instead you are moved by uh, reaching out to a loved one or something tonight or on any of the nights uh, that I'm on, maybe uh, send me a, don a love donation if you'd like to. Uh, you can do so there. And uh, that's, once again, a way of just uh, letting me know that you appreciate what's going on. I was I always say, though, don't forget, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. I mean, we're still going to reach out to your loved ones when we do those sessions. We're still going to uh, do these. It's just that if you feel moved, to do so, uh, then please do so. It's uh, it's uh, very easy to do. Also, I want to just uh, bring up real fast, as I've been bringing up, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, there's a lot of things happening and I wanna make sure that people are aware uh, we're doing classes again. And these classes um, are uh, paranormal classes that Shar and I are doing. We're gonna guide you through how you can be an empowered voice for the spirits to reach out and share their story once again. Uh, we go through an investigation, or sorry, we go through, yeah, we go through an investigation from start to finish. We are uh, showing people who haven't done investigations before, give them a little bit of insight and give them insight between what's different between, uh, between the shows and what's different between the shows and real investigations. Uh, you know, and, and that's not a disparagement of the shows. It's just what it is. I put the uh, link in the comments section in terms of if you'd like to sign up for the class. Uh, we've done this a number of times now. The disclaimer always is on this. Don't forget that this isn't like, oh, when you're done, you get a, you know, a, a, a certificate that says now you're a paranormal investigator. That's not what this is about. This is just to have a better understanding of how this works how investigation works, how in, in the case of uh, mediumship, how intuitiveness brings forth into this. Uh, it's just a great class. It's just a lot of information. We have about over 20 years of shared experience between Char and myself. We share a lot of our information. We share a lot of evidence that we picked up over the course of those years, including as well, uh, just spirit box recordings, uh, EVPs, uh, things that move on themselves, shadow figures, stuff like that. It's a very, very interesting. Um, it's a very interesting course, and and it's it's a lot of fun. So please consider doing that. I put the link into the chat. Also, I uh, just want to point out, uh, like we've done before, we have a couple of events coming up. Uh, we have the McIntyre Villa um, that's going to be on July eighth, and then we have Hotel Josephine that's on July 9th. Uh, if you do both events, you don't, you know, if you if you get the the right tickets, you won't have to 
uh, get a hotel room. They're, they're about 40 miles apart, the two locations, uh, and one's in uh, Atchison and the other is in Holton, Kansas, both in Kansas. They are not that far apart. You can get the overnight at the McIntyre for Hotel Josephine. You get um, you get a room. That's how. That's the way that you get in. You get a room at uh, Hotel Josephine, and if you do both uh, both events, you get a rebate. So please uh, check that out. I mean, I know that it's hard to get around because of gas prices and stuff, but everyone needs to get away once in a while. So please uh, take a look at that. Uh, so there's the McIntyre Villa event as well as the hotel josephine so that's coming up very quickly july 8th and 9th uh so you know we'll put the we'll put those uh links into the comments as well so if you have any questions on that let us know seeing if there's anything else uh as usual uh i just want to point out for those who like to um check out people who make new equipment and stuff always go over to Crack Skull Paranormal. Uh, Brad, who runs that page, is making some amazing stuff. Please go there, check it out. Uh, like the page, I would I would appreciate it. Uh, we have a lot of our friends over there now seeing all the work that he's doing. It's fantastic. So um, it's good, It's he does amazing work. And uh, I think that you go over there, you're going to see, uh, then you're gonna see uh, what it's all about. I'm just seeing a comment here. Let's see, if you can't afford to travel, then why not learn? Exactly, exactly. Uh, so I also wanted to say hi to everybody who is here that I haven't said hello to yet. Um, over on my personal profile page, over on Things, uh, MN Ghost Box, uh, Temple, uh, Are You Media, Free Spirited, uh, Skeleton Key. Thank you all so very much for joining us tonight. Now. Tonight we're gonna to do something a little bit different and I don't know where it's gonna lead us to be very honest, but we're gonna have a ITC conversation as well as uh, do some spirit bo box work. I'm not necessarily gonna do the spirit box work tonight. Um, we're going to leave that to someone else tonight as we are, uh, I wanted to uh, talk to uh, talk to my friend and uh, kind of see what's going on. He's always building stuff and as you're gonna see, while we get him on screen, he's literally building something right now. And I am bringing on Mr. Austin Maynard. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. So, um, I mean, the whole time I just saw, I see you like, I think I saw you sold, you know, soldering, uh, I saw soldering, excuse me. And I saw that you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just thinking, God, he just keeps working. When I'm like, I'm, when I'm trying to talk and stuff, I just see like smoke coming you know like through the monitor i could see i just want i was hoping everything was uh okay over there like there wasn't a fire or anything of course i know what you're doing but yeah uh, it's uh yeah it's all uh soldering you know solder fumes they come up looks like yeah. smoke but yeah <laughs> nope i'm uh currently working on uh, doing another um ecto one ghost box one of the uh you know the um uh, the ghostbusters car yeah and so um, I'm actually making one of those into a ghost box. I did one a little while ago, um, and uh, a bunch of people have been reaching out to me like, hey, we want one too. So, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty That's pretty cool. Now, you know, as you're making the boxes, you know, and you're making different types of boxes, how do you uh, decide, like, uh, how to make them? And I don't even necessarily mean, like, aesthetically i mean like the the workings and the in the sweep and everything uh that goes along with that what i mean is it just a matter of constant refining um in a way yeah i mean i can always do something better that i didn't do um you know so good the, the last time um and i'm always learning of course i think yeah. like if you're not learning then you know what are you doing um but uh i as far as like um, advancement goes, like pushing the boundaries to the point where like you moving into something that nobody else has done, uh, I'm not there yet. Um, that I leave that work to uh, you know KD sure. Stafford and the Haltays, both Steve and Katie and uh, Jay and you know guys like that. Um, 
just because those guys, I believe, are, and I've said it since I've been in doing all this ITC stuff, I've said it, uh, they are the ones that are really going to make advancements that, you know, nobody else is ever going to be able to make. Sure. Um, sure. And so I, per, I've i learned from them, you know, and they're all my very close friends. And so I take everything that I learned from them. Um, you know, Steve actually taught me how to build his sweep circuit. And so I use his sweep circuit in a lot of stuff. Um, I use my, my own, which is the uh, XR1, the 2206 circuit, um, which is not the only person I've ever found that has used that one was Frank in box number 52. Um, and so like, I felt like, okay, well, you know, nobody else is doing it. Might as well, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it, it's been fun to like explore all this stuff. And, you know, I, I've learned how to put the echo and reverb and how to modify the circuit for that. Um, learning about impedances. And I mean, it's just all kinds of a, kind of a, a crazy journey, but, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> so I have a couple people who are excited to see you, but they don't know quite what you do. You know, they they they're, they're kind of picking it up. What is it that you do? I mean, apart from you're 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 making boxes, you're doing different types of things. Do you also for them to know a little little bit about you? I guess. Um. Well, I'm 30 years old. I uh, suffered a sudden cardiac arrest, lethal arrhythmia at age 18. I was technically dead for like seven and a half minutes or something. Um, and that's kind of what got me interested in the paranormal and all that. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's what kind of started my passion, I guess. But uh, I currently am the founder, CEO, whatever you want to call it, of the Underground Paranormal Network. And we actually have five locations, uh, five historic locations that we have been helping to uh, raise money for, you know, bring awareness to the place. And uh, we run, we operate uh, paranormal investigations and tours out of it. Nice. And I'm good friends with, uh, you know, some pretty good people that have helped me along the way. You know, the Wraith Chaser guys, um, Mike, Chris, Doogie. Um and uh, KD, of course, you know, he's one of my best friends. Um, and then uh, recently I was just hired on as the uh, tech manager for uh, Death Walker with Nick Groff. Oh, very nice. Um, so, and I'm actually excited about that one because, um, you know, we when you watch a TV show, when you watch all these different shows, you know, it's always the same kind of stuff on everything. You know, it's... A, portal of some type a geo box and then you got your emf meters and all this stuff um you know that's great you know it's it's great but like where's the innovation why are we um limiting what we're doing on tv to the same things when what if we were to put something different out there that may inspire somebody who is uh you know interested in the stuff and then they could find something even better Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what we're doing now is going to inspire future generations. So, like, I am happy about the opportunity to be able to actually put some real stuff out there. And um, I'm, you know, I'm actually putting, uh, like, you know, all of the builders, all of the other builders stuff out there, too. You know, I'm trying to make sure that we get some real, some great equipment on to the uh, into the mainstream. Um, and the thing I love about the show and, you know, and I, when I've been on set, you know, I see how he does it. I know like, it's not, uh, can I cuss? Can I say bullshit? Yeah, go ahead. Say bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I know it's not bullshit. You know what I mean? Like I actually see what he's doing and the equipment. I personally set up all of the experiments. Uh, so like, I know that it's set up to where if we get something, it's like, you know, I'm trying to eliminate anything that could be debunked, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. You know, I, it's, that's, that's really cool. I like the idea too, that you, you, you know, you're all trying to promote the work of each other too, you know, where it's, it's, it's not because I think that's the only way you, you are. I mean, you, you, you mentioned that you're not building stuff to progress the field, but I think by sharing other people, work and make for those who don't even know you're therefore progressing the field because you're you're giving it out to people letting people know about stuff they may have not known before 
Yeah, and that's always what I've been about, though, is just um, like when I first got into like ITC, you know, I started working with Jay and KD, Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, before their stuff really got on TV or before KD even got on TV. And I think I helped to um, just kind of I I was blasting them out there for years, you know, at least a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've always known that these are the guys, you know, th- th- then the hall phase too. I, you know, I started talking to them and realized like how much of a fingerprint uh, Steve has on the field. And I didn't realize how big it was, but it's a lot bigger than most people think. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I realized that these guys really are, uh, incredible with their thinking. And I, I have ideas, you know, I have ideas on how to do things on things that I would think would be cool to experiment around with during a hunt. But, um, you know, I I don't really have the know how to do it. Um, I, and I understand that I recognize that. And I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, I'm this great builder because I I think I, I I'm pretty good at the, I call them the novelty boxes, like, you know, taking something old and cool and turning it into a ghost box. Um, but, you know, I will be the last person to claim that I'm doing anything that's innovative. So I definitely will always give that kind of uh, credit to those four, you know, those four, because they are really the ones. I mean, some of the stuff that Katie Halte has put together, you know, and Steve's right. Yeah, uh, Steve's the one that gets these ideas. And uh, it, it's kind of it's crazy because Katie is just like a genius when it comes to uh like programming and coding and all that stuff. She can make it do basically whatever she wants. And Steve just says, Hey, well, can we do this? And Katie's like, yep, done. Mm -hmm. You know? (laughs) So, and, uh, and Jay, you know, he's just, I mean, it's all audio experimentation. Like this dude is trying to eliminate, he's trying to use the radio frequencies, but not pick up any radio. Like he's trying to eliminate radio completely and just have like a direct, uh, direct communication, direct radio voice, um, which is something that Ron Yacovetti is uh, mm-hmm. doing a lot of work in as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then KD, I mean, <laughs> this dude, he just comes up with all kinds of crazy shit. Like, I don't, I don't even understand how he like thinks of some of this stuff half the time, but he's, uh, I mean, he's brilliant. They're all brilliant, man. And um, I'm happy that they were able, that they have taught me what I know. But, um, you know, I'm not going to ever try to, one, I don't ever want to outshine those guys. And two, I don't think I could outshine those guys. <laughs> you know I mean? it, it, it's interesting because what, I, what I'm loving about this conversation is that uh, the people who watch me, there are some who are very deep into the paranormal, who will know all the names that you are throwing out there. And there are others who have been watching and taking part in the stuff that I do and other people do, but they're, they're, they're not, you know, they, their knowledge of the people may not be as, as strong. And I think that that is why these are good conversations because right now you are introducing a lot of people to uh, different types of people, including yourself that, you know, it's just, it, I think that this is, this is really neat to see and, and be a, be a part of, I think. Um, I'm getting a lot of comments uh, through here, which is nice. Uh, and one, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Kimberly asks, is your heart okay now? See my, the people who watch our show, they, they care. They care, Austin. They care about you. They don't even know you and they care. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, yeah. I haven't had any incidents in like, she it happened the first my first one happened in 2009 and they um the the doctors like pr- uh what do you pr- prematurely put mm-hmm. a um, icd defibrillator in my chest and so um this is actually now my second one that i've had i had the first one replaced um and uh you know so i haven't had any in- incidents uh in like at least 10 years and um i don't take any kind of heart medication. And the biggest thing is that like, I've been to probably four or five different uh, clinics, like cardiologists and things across the country, uh, even up to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, And uh, they can't really put a definitive uh, reason why it happened. Um, Like there's nothing to really explain why. Uh, so that's why they just kind of have this in me so that like, it's more of an insurance policy, I guess. 
like if my heart goes out of rhythm, it'll shock it back. Now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm also not here to extend the field, but have you thought about a defibrillator spirit box? I'm just throwing it out there, you know, just, you know, you're just like here, let me talk to spirit. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm an ideas man, Austin. I just, I can't help myself. Um, no, man, I, I, that's how my mind is too. Like, see, I'll walk through, uh, you know, or I'll look through like Etsy. I'll look through uh, all kinds of different shops, even going to uh, Walmart, you know, I'll be looking through electronics and be like, how can I use that? What can I do with that? <laughs> right? um, but now defibrillator, man, like that would like destroy, <laughs> destroy the circuitry. <laughs> like I have to, I have to walk around the metal detectors at the airports and be wandered down. So like <laughs> I think, uh, pa pacemaker REM pods, you, we're all, we're all just want to help you succeed in this field. <laughs> Austin. This is all we want to do. So yeah, if you just like in the middle of the night, you just like light up. I mean, it, I think it would be beautiful, <laughs> quite frankly. Tell you what, Christy, <laughs> I know Christy. Christy, yeah. tell you what, That's if you can get a hold of an actual ICD pacemaker device, and you send it to me, I'll see what I can do with it. But I'm going to tell you right now, those things are mm, like crazy expensive, man. Like crazy mm -hmm. expensive. So when, when, in all seriousness, though, when, when uh, your heart situation happened, you're dead for seven minutes. Was there any, uh, was, was there any sort of out of body experience that you remembered or were you just out and came back? Um, well, the way I, can describe it as uh, I just kind of woke up in the hospital, didn't know what the heck happened. You know, I I just thought I was a sleeper. So it was like I was waking up from a sleep that, like, if I were to have slept 16 hours. Mm -hmm. But I was in a coma for three days. So a uh, medically induced coma. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, because I, like, when I, f when I collapsed, I, I guess I hit the back of my head really hard on an Oak Entertainment Center. And so I suffered like short term memory loss. I uh, had frontal lobe inhibition, which is like basically you lose the filter that you have before you say things. It's like you just speak whatever comes to your mind. And it's like, oh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but I did. I ended up saying it. It's not good. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just, I mean, you know, there's not enough people who I, I was just actually talking about that actually with, with, with Christy actually about how people don't ever, ever really say what's on their mind anyway, you know, that they, they're too afraid of people like, uh, you know, like they might hurt our feelings if they actually say the truth. And it's like, yeah, you can go overboard with that. But at the same time, I'd rather just hear it than someone just like skirting around something for, you know, weeks. You know? I think our friends probably feel that way. I almost feel like now, lately, this entire country, this whole world really is just like everybody just speaks whatever the hell they have on their mind and don't really care what other people think. And yeah. that's like, yeah, a huge problem right now because, like, you know, certain things you shouldn't talk about with other people, like politics, religion, stuff like that. You know, back in the day, you didn't talk about that stuff because it only caused problems. And now, what are we doing? We're all talking about the stuff, and it's only causing problems. I just, you know, like some of those things. It's like you just eh, maybe keep that thought to yourself. You know. Well, and that's that uh, segues into our next. Uh, segment called politics corner no i'm just kidding but um <laughs> it's, it's <so> deep. <laughs> man you know that that uh <laughs> you know uh, how that is and with the spirit you know why, why not talk about politics with paranormal we talk about everything else and then right. that's, it's like annette's trying to trying to um uh, we can talk paranormal politics. Paranormal, oh, gosh, there's a lot of that. I'm not even going to get near that. Um, <laughs> I'd rather that than real politics. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're both gross. I think. Um, yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah. So okay, let's let's talk about this. You know, and just you know, probably a question you get a lot, and I, I'm going to join in on this one too. Uh, what it, what it, what stands out as a great piece of spirit box? Uh, recording that you that you got yourself that you think this is really like this is what the spirit box is capable of doing uh well there's a number of things actually it just depends on um like what kind of box i'm using uh like for instance with um 
with uh, any of Jay Prather's stuff, the uh, direct link, uh, any of the two K boxes. I'm locked out on. Yes, <laughs> I know you're upset about that one. <laughs> <laughs> there will be another one, I'm sure, man. But um, the thing with the direct links and the two Ks is that they they are scanning randomly. They're scanning the FM for, uh, band randomly, and Jay actually adds like you know, a whole thousands of extra frequencies into it instead of it being like, so you it's know, not linear. no, no, it's, it's just, just jumping it's all just over the spectrum. And, and that's, that's to, yeah, yeah. And that's actually part of the whole idea of like, de, you know, getting rid of the uh, debunking stuff. Like, because if it's one, if one little blip of a voice comes through and then it's just static, I mean, that's yeah. clearly another radio station would have bled through probably. Absolutely. But, um, the thing with Jay's devices is that not only is it random, you know, and so when it jumps and it says like four words in the same voice, right back to back to back, that's impressive. However, what I get really excited about is when, um, when he has the echo and reverb on his devices mm -hmm. and uh, something comes through that doesn't have echo and reverb. Okay. Now that is a form of direct radio voice, meaning it did not come from the tuner mm -hmm. because the way circuitry works or way ghost boxes are built. It's always the, uh, the tuner, which is the radio. And then you have the echo and reverb board. You got the amplifier and then the speaker. And it, there's no skipping over any of those. So like everything that comes from the tuner will have echo and reverb. So why would there be something that comes through that doesn't? Right. That makes no sense, especially something that is super loud and like anything else, even quieter voices coming through have echo and reverb. And if this doesn't, that tells me that it came after the reverb board. Mm -hmm. So it just like skipped over it. So that lends the question, like, what put that there? How did that get in there? How did that voice not have the echo and reverb? Because that's there's it's impossible for circuitry to skip. So. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I look for with that. Um, but like when you talk about like a Steve's box, right? Like I have the uh, RCA that Steve makes. And um, I mean, it's probably one of the best boxes I've ever used uh, because this the way that that works is like you're supposed to turn the sweep speed up super fast, like almost on full blast as you're sweeping. And um, it will use the jitter from the radio stations, just all kind of blending together into a big like basically like a blender. And um, I've actually had an instance at the uh, Detroit sixth precinct building when, um, before Ed passed away um, yeah. where uh, like I, we were in the basement and I think Brandy, Brandy was with me too, Brandy Marie. Um, and she, we were basically hearing a voice come through for like, I don't know, a good 11, 12 minutes just like the same voice talking over the entire band, like in an accent. And it was just wild. And it was talking about this whole thing, like, uh, like they were regretful for the things they've done. You know, they don't want this young kid to get hurt, whatever, you know, it was like, talk I have the video out there and it was actually on a live stream and I didn't edit the video at all. When I put reposted it as just the segment, um, I only put captions on it for what I thought it said. Um, but like <laughs> when you watch the live feed too, I mean, you can hear everything. Like, it's just like, holy crap. This thing just said like a whole freaking told us a little 11 minute story. It responded to our questions, but like you could hear the accent. It's almost like a, uh, like a upscale London kind of accent. Oh, okay. More posh, like, they would say. A posh. Like someone who's wealthy and proper. Right. And, yep. Yeah. Educated. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Now, and, I'm getting a lot of people asking me where they can, where, where can they watch that? They'd like to see that. Um, I mean, I've shared the post. I've shared the video a number of times on my Facebook page. Uh, the live feed. I think I even posted in one of those posts. Uh, that the link to the original live feed as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, I, I don't know what I titled it as. I mean, I know that it's basically set, talking about the RCA Steve's box. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it's pretty easy to find if you scroll down through the, through my feed a little ways, probably a lot. Cause I post a lot, I think. 
on your personal profile page? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's where, but. So, um, folks, if you go to his name is in the corner there, go to go to go to his page and follow friend. I don't know, if, you know, if you have room for friends on your page. Oh, I got plenty of room. Plenty of room. You know, it's crazy. I don't even think I have twenty five hundred friends. Not crazy. I mean, that's, that's it is kind of wild, though, when you think about it, because some people out there have like five thousand. They got to cut down on them. It's like, dang, I've never even been that. <laughs> No, I always laugh at the, I always laugh at the people who like like you'll get the friend request from, from like the woman like the 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 beautiful woman in the uh, bikini and you're like you know that that's not a real profile but then it'll be like seven mutual friends and it's like you go to the profile cuz you want to see who those people are and uh there it's like those like oh you can find me on OnlyFans and all that stuff but yet these people are still like being, you know, like, I don't know if you think that you're going to hook up with them or what, but, uh, you know, you don't need to be their friends, I don't think. Uh, I almost think, like, people don't even, like, realize it. it just, so, I think some people will just add everybody that kind of... I think so, too. Was, but that's some people, not that's me. Some people, not all people. I got some... I got. Some, well, I wanted to quickly tell you my story uh, about uh, that box that I showed you, the Andre, and Andre's box, the video I showed you. Right. Uh, we were over at a at a uh, hotel a couple of years ago, and there's some people who I know are watching that were actually there. And on a Friday night in the restaurant, we were getting uh, uh, somebody's loved ones come through their their uh, their son who died. Uh, he was coming through, so we brought in the parents who were there at the time. Another friend of mine. Um, who uh, his his brother came through, and then we started to get this thing. The, the, these three words kept coming through: Lisa, so angry, and Sunday. And it was just over and over again: Lisa, so angry, Sunday. Lisa, so angry, Sunday. And we just couldn't figure out what it was. So we just that Friday night we just left it. And then Saturday night we went down uh, into the basement of this location. And we started getting more people coming through and stuff. And then we got, once again, Lisa, so angry, Sunday, Lisa, so angry, Sunday. And we're, we're all just like, we, we don't know what this is. We had a, a, a medium who was a friend of ours named Lisa and we reached out to her and she's like, I don't know what this could possibly be. So we just kind of let it go. Um, and then I was going to go to bed, but I didn't. For some reason, I stayed up, and we knew the people who ran the hotel, so we're hanging out with them. And it was probably around I don't know one thirty in the morning or something. And the woman who was running the hotel that night and running the bar, she was on duty. She comes out to the lobby, and she's just bawling. She's just so upset, so so just sad. And we're like, my God, what's wrong? And she goes. Uh, and I don't remember the woman's name, doesn't matter. Uh, the, there's a teenage that worked at this place. Her mom died. They found her dead at her house. They found her just face down dead. And uh, so this, this this young girl's mom died. And so she was absolutely horrified by this. And uh, my friend asked, well, what's her name? And they said, it's Lisa. So... Uh, you know, and it's like it was Sunday at that point. So <laughs> that nuts. that was crazy. That was that was crazy. That's um, pretty nuts. Yeah, that that was. Um, I got a couple questions here for you. Okay. Uh, so, folks, uh, Mr. Brad from Praxcall Paranormal, he says, being a maker of spirit boxes, what is your take on the apps like the Necrophonics? Nope. So you're saying it's good stuff, huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I personally am not a big fan. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that believe in them. I prefer a like a, a, a hard device, you know, something that has the circuitry, works with the voltages. Um, I mean, even the programmed uh, devices are you know, more credible to me. Um, and it's not that I don't think that they can work because I do. I think that the spirits could use just about anything. If, you know, if they know how to do it and they can figure it out, they can do it. Um, but I, I don't know. I think I struggle with it because um, 
a lot of those may use your use the microphone on board to you know take your voice and mix it into something i don't know what kind of programming goes into those apps you know do they have triggers that like if somebody speaks a certain word it will respond with a certain word like the algorithms that people put into these things are crazy i just don't trust them but that's just my personal view on it you know like Absolutely. I know a lot of people swear by them, but I just, I, I can't. I, I feel, I, I mean, I feel like that uh, I don't, I really am not a fan of like free apps. You know, I feel like that if you're going to pay, if you're going to put a little money into something, you know, that's to me, that's the way sh should, you know, if you're going to go that route, I don't really like me either. Now, Christy here says uh, Greg only uses apps. And I think that's a horrible thing to say about Greg Koss, to be honest. Um, I think he does not only use apps. <laughs> <Is that what laughs> <you're... laughs> you talk about Greg or you, Greg, or Greg Koss? <laughs> I just think that's, that's slander, Christy. I don't, that's no, I don't know why you're picking on Greg Koss that way, but uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's just the way that that works. So. I was going to say, Christy, Greg Koss only uses his, uh, is Nanocom that KD that KD building? So yeah. Well, and we so I got the joke. So we're <laughs> <laughs> well, and and so Christy has uh, the, a mini ink box uh, mm -hmm. from. You got it from me. Well, that's right. That's right. I remember the story. She told me many times. Um, but the thing about that is we were at the Ohio, Ohio State Reformatory and we were using it down in the in the basement of, of the place. And we had a situation where we had about a 10, 12 minute conversation with the same voice, a woman voice, because we originally were approaching it like what's the hierarchy of the uh with the hierarchy in in the prison as far as people can talk to us and stuff and right. we were getting you know someone that sounded like that they were a secretary to the warden uh and it was the same female voice over and over and we had a really good uh a really good conversation uh, oh yeah those i don't know like uh, the crazy thing about the one that christy has is that kd will never be able to make those anymore because uh, they changed something about those radios uh, to where, like, KD, you can't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, hang on to that one, Christy. Might be worse on someday. But yeah, bring, um, bring it next time I see you. I'll make sure it's safe. <laughs> make sure that nothing happens. That's how I feel. Any anybody that's got a Frank's box out there, if you just want it to be safe. I, I got you. I'm just gonna say about yours. I think that that's something that I'd, I'd be happy to, you know, make sure it's safe, fun, free. <laughs> Don't worry. I also have Linda. She says she asked you the question, um, Austin. Are you working with something that reads frequency, say like a meter gun that can read a spirit that goes by? See, now I've thought about that. Like. Um, like I've always thought it would be cool to use a um, a spectrogram to do things, but then I've also thought about a um, like an oscilloscope, like mm -hmm. attaching an oscilloscope to it to actually read where frequencies, like where the you know everything's coming from. Um, I don't know. I feel like when you do that, and obviously if you're trying to get legitimate spirit communication like in the sense of like um, like how do i say this like basically when you do that i feel like you're taking the fun away um because you are starting to um kind of eliminate the whole spirituality aspect of it the the connection aspect of it you're just basically trying to find uh, anomalies in the audio and that's a lot of what jay does Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think there there's absolutely a huge need for it. I personally do not. Um, I build my boxes uh, like with this, with Steve sweep or mine. Um, I try to build them so that they sweep fast. Um, so that, you know, when it, when it, when it's sweeping, you know, it's not uh, a radio station that can bleed through with three or four words. Like if it's going to speak multiple words, um it's gonna have to do that itself it's gonna have to make that happen um i because i i don't like slow sweeps i just think that there's too much that can be debunked out of it but um yeah i 
I don't know. I'm, I'm really big on making a connection, like a physical connection and a spiritual connection with each box that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I also believe in uh, spirit operators or technicians, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think that there's some things that if you if you do start getting out the scientific equipment, not to say that that takes it away, but it kind of hinders the connection, I believe. That's just me. I, I was going to ask you what your methodology is for that, because, um, you know, it, it is there is always that what I, I look at it as like two two schools of thought of those people who walk into and they turn on the equipment and see what comes through. I personally uh, am just I like to use like basically mediumship to request spirit to come through you're using uh you know uh you know technicians and whatnot so that's that's really interesting because i find personally personally for me i agree with you i think that i want to be able to have that connection because i i can actually feel it then at that point mm -hmm. um do yeah you, are you in that in that realm then as well um in a sense uh i'm i'm weird man because like Part of me is always like the maybe the way I use the technician that I have. I call him Doc. Uh, he's mm -hmm. just an old grumpy ass man that like you know I always know when it's him that comes through because uh, you know he, he's a grumpy ass man and he makes sure that I know that he's not happy that he's there, but he's there, you know. Um, but I use him more to be able to tune in the spirit box. Uh, right. because a lot of the boxes that I use, um, are not just simple, like turn on, turn up the volume and you're good. Like I have to adjust it to where the sweep speed is right. The, you know, the, uh, if there are any effects, have the effects, right. Have the, um, like with an ink box, like that KD has, you know, fine tuning that, uh, the tuning dial to where you want it to be. Um, you know, I, I feel like even um, if I, you know, if I move it to another room, I have to redo it all just because I, I don't know why I'm like that, but that's how I am. And so I'll listen to the technicians. I'll listen to the operators um, and kind of ask them, like, you know, do I need to turn this up, this down? You know, I'll go through it all with them. And um, that seems to work for me. Um, as far as like calling out specific entities, I, I don't know. I guess I've never really tried to call out specific entities. I always just kind of talk to whoever wants to come through. Um, and if they want themselves to, if they want to make themselves known, they want to communicate, then I believe that they will come. But I'm one of those guys like the, uh, the field of dreams. If you, <laughs> if you call, if you call them, they will come. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting about that, um, that, I, when you said it, because I this is these because I do spirit box twice a week, Sunday and Tuesdays, uh, and Tuesdays tend to be ones where I actually do ask for uh, spirit to uh, like specific spirits to come through. Um, and uh, do you mind if I play one for you? No, go ahead, man. Let's sure. let's let's, uh, let's bore everyone who have uh, heard this a hundred thousand times. <laughs> um, you know, it's just. Because we did it here. I mean, a lot of people who are watching now, they heard it. Um, and so this is actually, let's see, uh, this is me trying to reach out to uh, Mary Todd Lincoln, okay? Now, it was a good one to talk to because she loved this stuff. She did. And I, I, I mess up, I mess up my question to her. And the reason why I mess up my question to her is because she um because i originally reached out to lincoln and we got a, a response to that and so uh and we got a voice that we thought could be lincoln and that kind of actually starstruck me a little bit so uh so the question i asked her was simply mrs lincoln uh you 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 know you were into spirits you you would reach out to spirits and talk to them now that you're a spirit you reach out and talk to the living so you're going to hear how i screwed up uh the question and made it like incomprehensible and you're going to hear a response which i think is pretty cool it's a female is this mary todd lincoln i don't know but take a listen to this lincoln you spent your entire life 
reaching out to uh, reaching out to spirit. Do you talk? Do you talk to other people? Do you talk to other people as a spirit to other living people? Talk about what? Talk about what? So, yeah, I heard her when you first asked the, uh, or when you first said, um, d you know, you spent your whole life doing this. She goes, I know. Yep. <laughs> yeah, then talk about what? So, I mean, and, that's. And that was an exercise. I mean, because I do these as exercises. Like, can I reach out to the people I, I want to reach out to? Can I manifest that? Right. That's something I find very interesting. If I can do that, if I can, if right. I'm able to do that, then that's pretty cool. Now, granted, right. I mean, obviously the big question, the big thing here is we can't, we can't say for certain that's Mary Todd Lincoln. Right. Well, I mean, we can't say for certain that any of this is anything. Exactly. But it's like all the pops. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, it's definitely interesting to say the least, especially when, um, I mean, something as direct as that. And uh, if you thought that you were communicating with Lincoln, she comes through and like intelligently responds to that question. I don't know. I wish I, I wish there was more to that because I would have liked to see how it progressed from there. But uh, oh, yeah, I could I could say because Mandy just reminded me of something. We actually got, got her name also, Mary Todd. Oh, wow. That's crazy. It wasn't as clear. Uh, and, you know, that's something I think we always have to be careful of, right, is like just like blurps of, of radio and like, oh, nope, that's what it sounded like. It's It, it had the same sil number of syllables, therefore that's what it was. And that's something I think we all have to be very careful of is not, yeah. you know. Being that's why I like a fast sweep because like yeah. then you kind of, like if you got the sweep fast enough to where, you know, a, you'll just hear a blip of a voice, obviously, just the little phonemes and the, you know, the syllables, whatever. Uh, you don't even get a full word to come through. Like those, that's the type of sweep I like because then you never really have to worry about, you know, um, Don King fucking Ford over there or something. I know right. I said no. Don King, but no. you <laughs> and, and to be honest, I do I do a slower sweep. I'm doing a 200 generally uh, when I'm when I'm doing it. But I I do agree that there is there is something uh, to definitely to be said about that. Um, Christy suggests I play a voicemail. I got um, maybe we do that. I well, it's not a spirit box. It's it's a voicemail. Um, and what what that was simply was um, I was using Ouija board. Um, and I hadn't used one before and I sat down with it, started using it and uh, nothing happened. I didn't think twice about it. So I next day I'm at work and I get a phone call and the phone number is 952-666 then four other digits. And I'm like, well, I ain't answering. I said to my coworker, I ain't answering this. And uh, they left a voicemail for me. And uh I'll play the voicemail for you real fast because it's it's very interesting because uh, this is this is truly what came through in the voicemail um, and I I checked I called back immediately afterwards no the the phone number doesn't exist I called the phone company it didn't exist so what is it we're not sure but here's the voicemail how dare you let me yell at you. I'll play it for y'all one more time. How dare you? Let me yell again. Let me yell again. It's we we think there's all all of us think it's like a couple different things. Either let us out of here or let us out again. Yeah, I heard let us out again. Yeah. But, no, that's that's weird. Yeah, that's messed up. That ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> not right at all. Let's well, see. That's something I've always uh, that I'm actually going to um, sneak peek for uh, Death Walker season three. That's something mm -hmm. I'm going to play around with is uh, telephone frequencies. The um, like I've even uh, same thing with like walkie talkie frequencies. Like uh, there have been times where I've gotten voices coming through a walkie talkie that I had clipped to my belt you know, a little girl laughing or something at the Rhodes Hotel. And mm -hmm. like, so 
there there may be something and i've heard that's not even just uh like i've heard you and i've heard a hundred other people tell me about weird phone calls weird voicemails that they've gotten um and so like i think that there's something that we should be exploring there uh, so i i want to try to figure out a way that i could play around with that stuff but i think um one of the biggest things would be something simple just like here i'm going to call this phone from this phone we're just going to set them down and see what happens see if they can use the microphones from the telephone see if they can use the frequency that the yeah. telephones are running on which i think if i'm not mistaken is like 2.4 hertz or something like that 2.4 gigahertz mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i mean it, it's I, I those are always fascinating to me they are it is, and I think, I think it is kind of something, because it, it, like you said, too, there's, there's always that, like, especially in Honda locations, when you're using your walkie-talkie and you get something that you're like, who the hell is that? That's none of us. Yeah, like, there's only two of us in this building that have a walkie-talkie. And, I mean, granted, you could have easily picked up something from a neighbor. But, like, when you're talking about, you know, it being, like, 1 o'clock in the morning and where is a kid going to get a walkie-talkie and put it on the exact frequency and you know what i mean like it just seems a little far-fetched to think that that could happen granted it could have happened but that is an experience that has always stuck with me um it's stuck with me for years and i'm st like i still go back to the Rhodes hotel i just recently went back because like i was like man you know i really want to uh i really really want to uh figure out what the heck that was you know, just the timing of it, though, is just really weird. Yeah, no, and, and it, that's just, and that's that's the thing about my my voicemail. It's like you could say it's coincidence that they got a prank call, and she left a, a crazy voicemail. But how? Yeah, when you call when you call the number back, it doesn't exist. No, nope. you done. You did your due diligence to try to debunk that. Yeah. You could. So that's weird. That is weird. So, what is a what is a favorite box for you right now? What is, what is it that you like using? This is my Robo Box. This is right now. This is my favorite. At least mm -hmm. right now. Every time I get a new box, it becomes my favorite. I'm not going to lie, but um, like this one, especially KD had had built one like months ago when he was in uh, Butte, Montana, filming for the Ghost of Devil's Perch. Yep. And we were on video chat and he had one that he built in his hotel room and he was just sitting there and we were listening to it. And I was like, dude, I want one. He's so bad. And so he finally made me one. And he says this one sounds better than his, but I, I don't know, man, I'm still trying to learn how to use it, but yep. it's, it's so, it's a great box. It's random sweeping FM, but he's added random, uh, random moments of muting inside like so there would be a um yeah you know, like it'll be like a half a second mute that he just puts in there and it'll hit randomly and so yeah that element into it uh plus the regular ghost box and everything um but then you add the uh voice changer circuit on top and uh makes it sound really robotic and uh kind of like the spiritcon for those who uh, know what that is mm -hmm. uh, if not look it up on youtube it's kind of crazy even though at this point we all know you know the truth about it but uh just the idea of the spirit con was just you know amazing at the time and everybody has was trying to duplicate it could never do it um and so i love that it's very close to the sound at least sure sure do you ever have um, people, I, I don't know if I have this as much anymore as I used to, uh, but I mean, when I, especially when I got into the field, um, I had a lot of people who were just really not interested in spirit boxes at all, or the ITC. Do you ever, do you run into that still, or do you feel it's much more accepted now than it has been before? Well, it's definitely a lot more accepted than it has been before. Um, I think, I mean, definitely way more accepted i i mean i still run into like, occasionally the one dude that's just like no you know <laughs> no doesn't work yeah radio coming through um but those are the people that don't really like get the whole point of like they don't get the idea that we're not looking for radio stations we're looking for everything but radio stations yeah and um you know and i understand why they feel certain ways about it 
because you know that's how every a lot of people that don't know what they're doing or whatever you know they get the sb7 they just turn it on they hear a voice come through instantly it's a ghost you know it's not possibly a radio station whatever but yeah um you know you're always i think there's always going to be those people that are very old school very um you know they got their recorder their flashlight you know maybe a millimeter mm-hmm. or a rimpod, but like i think that itc um is making a huge uh like there's a huge interest a uh, huge increase in the interest in itc and um it's not fully mainstream yet um i think it is absolutely becoming more mainstream and um and uh, i think i don't know i want to i kind of want to take some credit for that but Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't want to sound like i'm you know like i have an ego or anything because i don't but uh like i know that for the past like four years man i have been pushing the hell out of actual itc like actual ghost boxes actual custom boutique boxes built by these guys that are you know just unbelievable doing things that you know you can't do with a with something you can get on uh what i call the paramart of the field Mm -hmm. i'll yeah like you know go stop the you know all those different shops and i mean nothing wrong with those they're great for people that are beginners and sometimes they do come out with some cool stuff but Mm -hmm. uh there's real itc work being done um like i think people need to get away from the portals personally yeah uh, because you can actually get all of that stuff into a circuit and and spend like a quarter of the money that you would pay like i saw somebody was uh, selling a a portal from gotcha ghost today for like 650 dollars and i was like good lord you know i dude if anybody wants a box with the echo and they want you know they want that with an actual tuner inside of it already working like i could do it for less than half the price of this yeah yeah it's like what i mean even if they want me to get a zt lunchbox amp and use that i'll do it <laughs> and, i mean it's even like you know even look at the old like huff boxes and stuff those portals going for like 12 1500 bucks and it's like why you know, that's a, that's a different that's a different conversation altogether though that that whole area is really he huff is i'm glad he's gone i mean like he's not gone completely but like he's been shunned from all itc uh like the the actual field the actual community you know like he's no longer a uh anybody like nobody wants him around anymore and i'm happy about that because he he did help to introduce the idea of using effects to enhance uh, the hands the ghost boxes, but um, you know the problem was that he was faking a lot of his sessions using their vo- using celebrity voices in the apps that he was doing to get the communication, and then also obviously everybody knows about the fact that he'll do it one day after they die or something yes. disrespectful yeah. as hell. Yeah. And, but, so I have. I have Tom here who is who's in the field. So he's looking for he wants a recommendation on a nice ghost box. What would you tell him that, you know, he's not a beginner in the field by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, but he's he said he certainly doesn't want to go. He puts another comment down, doesn't want to have like the the white noise of like an SB seven or eleven. So what would you what would you recommend to someone like him? Well, um, I think a lot of it would depend on what exactly he would be looking for in his ghost box. I mean, does he want like a linear sweep, a random sweep? Uh, Do you want uh, the ability to switch between AM and FM? Or do you just want, like, does that matter? Uh, Do you want the ability to make contact with it and have a direct contact with the box itself in order to increase the reception? Um, I mean, do you want reverse speech? Do you want, I mean, there's a lot of things that, you could get and each like you would go to like Katie Halte and Steve Halte if you wanted to get like reverse speech or you wanted to get, um, you know, a random sweep kind of thing. Um, KD Stafford also does uh, random sweeps, but uh, KD also, um, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard because uh, they, they all sound different. 
yeah. you would have to like kind of take a look at each one because they all sound different. They all are built differently. Um, I guess it depends. A lot of it depends on how much money you want to spend too, you know, cause if you're going to go to the hall days, you know, you're going to get a, not only a great box, but a piece of art from Katie. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean, you're going to be paying a little more than, you know, a hundred and what I think KD has been selling those ink box S's for like 125 bucks. Those are great boxes though, too. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. you want something simple, something quick. It's got a flashlight on it and seven shortwave bands. Actually, oh. you know what? I think it's got nine shortwave bands now that I think about it. Yeah. What What about, uh, as Brad, Brad asks about any recommendations on a box for someone with hearing issues? Uh, that would be the Haltes. Probably Steve Halte. Um, the RCAs are great. They're got a huge speaker. They're loud. Um, and, uh, I mean, you know, those are great too. Uh, if you wanted, uh, something a little less expensive, um, you know, KD does make the, the ink box, the ink, ink box S as well. Those two, uh, both of which have a uh, headphone jack if you wanted, um, you know, or you could plug it into a louder speaker. Um, there's options out there. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to come out with a ghost box that actually will have like closed captioning on the freaking on a screen, <laughs> right on the ghost box itself. That would be cool. Wouldn't it? That'd be neat. Yeah. That'd be really neat. Uh, Linda asks uh, you, do you ever run a number of spirit boxes at the same time in order to evaluate their differences in output? I have before with Jay's boxes with uh, the IDC devices. Um, and I mean, I've done it like, you know, connected multiple direct links together, like take the output of one, put it into the input of another and back around kind of deal. Um, I've also uh, a lot of Jay's boxes too. one of my 2K boxes. I could plug two, three, four different tuner, two different radios into it and have them all run out the same speaker. I do like that idea, but I've also, um, I, I love the idea of having multiple tuners in the same box. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know why exactly. I think it's just because it adds more chaos that they could use. Um, and I'm one of those guys that believes that communication, uh, if we're talking about spiritual, the spiritual realm, and I personally don't believe that time and space matters to them. So, you know, they could essentially use the uh you know the sample rate in the audio as like legos you know just like the little almost like a pixelation of a picture take it apart and you can rearrange it to however you want like mm-hmm. that's how i feel could be uh how they are communicating to us through the ghost boxes so the more chaos when you add more tuners together more radios together i think that that is uh beneficial in that sense that's cool now we are at uh, eleven oh six p.m. Central Standard Time. Do we so want time to run a ghost box? Right, it's time to run a ghost box. What What would you like to do? Let's run the Robo Box, man. Let's run this bad boy. Okay, because uh, I love it. That's why. <laughs> now, are you going to ask any questions? You're just going to let it run, and we're going to see what's going to come out. I actually kind of want, um, you know what I think would be cool is if everybody else was asking questions, like ask a question through the comments and then maybe you can go through the comments and we can turn on, wait 10 seconds for each question or something, you know? Well, I mean, we could just, because well, how we normally do it is that's exactly how we do it. We have it through the comments and then while it's still running, we ask the question and, uh, you know, we can just uh, see if uh, we're connecting to the box um, on our end and just kind of see what happens. And if you hear it and we don't, if you can hear it, just let us know, okay? Yes. So folks, get your questions out there. Uh, just, you know, and we'll, we'll see what we can come up with. We'll do it for a few minutes for a little, for a little bit. And I'll start without the, uh, the robo effect on it. I'll just do it regular. Everyone can hear that up there. 
Is Austin a great guy? Couldn't make that one out. Yeah, it's almost female to me. Mm -hmm. It almost sounded like Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we get a number of how many spirits are around Austin right now? I almost thought it said 12, but... Mm. Well, let's do this. Can you confirm over here by turning on the device if it's 12, please? Can you name the city that Austin is in right now? Effect. Rosie might have heard it say country in a park. I don't live in an apartment, but I do live out in the country. So the what's going on with this now, there's a voice changer on this. Okay. So everything that's coming through is actually getting into this robotic effect. But I think that they can use the robotic effect, like the logos, like I said before, kind of they can communicate through that. So the purpose of the robot is to make it easier to talk for them, possibly. Possibly. Give them a tool. Can you, can you tell me how many people are in Austin's house right now, living, living people in the house? I swear it's like 14, but I know that that's not <laughs> right. We thought you were three, four, five. it is? I heard it say 
almost like it said July, but yeah, not what was that? How about this? What is your name? It says, who are you? Yeah. Well, I'm Austin. I'm Greg. And we have some people here that want to ask some questions. I really hope that you re re you rewatch the video afterwards. Try to figure out because that's saying some things. It is. Sounds like a book. We got some Who Doctor Who fans. Oh, some Who fans. Yeah. Where Where did you come from? Come from far away? Like, how are you here right now? Where? Where? You're in my house. Yeah. Does, do you, uh, can you, uh, like, do you, um, have to worry about time in your area? Like, I'm just sure that just said no, I don't. I, I thought I heard something like something about time. Do you, do, does time matter to you guys at all? So here's a thought. Here's a question. Um, if Einstein theorized that if space can be manipulated, then time can be manipulated. And so technically, the theory of time travel exists. Now, it, if you does time and space matter to you? Like, do, do are they relevant to you? Do you have to, like, can you go to any time period you want? Do you guys have to travel like, like we travel? Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Einstein said that time and space were the same thing. That's right. Time and space are the same thing. Um, yes, he did, right? You know, sometime, if I'm ever able to, I would like Einstein to be able to communicate with us. 
through the box. I would love to speak to him. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta put the headphones on for this one. So there's a movie on this side. There's a movie in the li in the living room called Insidious. Mm -hmm. um, and it basically the other side, the dead the side that you know, you know, where the spirits reside, it's all dark, and then there are beacons of light. Um, have you ever gone to any of those beacons? And how do you like what determines where the beacons are? Is it like people reaching out to you? Is it people calling out to you? So, another question I have. Um, without the, without having a physical brain, um, how is it that you are able to retain intelligence? Like, do you, are you able to learn? Um, do you guys age on the other side at all? I mean, how does... Are you able to choose your wardrobe for how you present yourself to people? Stay young forever. <laughs> I feel like you just say, Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How old would you uh, say that you are? Would you say that, do you present yourself as a, as a teenager, a child, or? I feel like it just said 32. Hmm. Now, now, does this have one sweep rate to it? Like one speed for a sweep rate? Uh, random, actually. Random? Mm -hmm. So, like, the sweep speed is random. The spot is random. It sure. doesn't have, like, a set start and stop point. Uh, just the rate at which it is random. Got it. I have a feeling what we're hearing is different than what you're hearing in terms of how it translates. Yeah. And see, I always wonder if that's something that plays a factor into it. Like from this traveling through the frequencies that are being broadcast right now, does it change? 
could it possibly even change for each person listening to give them a specific message? Well, and I, I think so too, but at, like, I think that we're losing out, like with the SB7, it actually in, enhances it. But with this, I think we're losing out. Okay. Well, I feel, I, I mean, that's the only thing. I'd, I'd be interested if you listen to some of it and, and like, you let us know, like, does it, is that representative of what it sounds like? Because I don't think it is. I think that it's much better on your end than what we're getting. Probably is. Um, I mean, it sounds like some people are hearing things, but yeah, it uh, does. But um, I I agree with you. And honestly, this is not the easiest ghost box to uh, listen to. You have to learn how to listen to it. You have to really concentrate. It's almost like, um, you know, when you when people tell you to look at things from a bird's eye perspective, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. try to do that. Listen to it from a bird's eye perspective. I guess is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how else I can kind of put it in perspective but uh it's almost like if you are listening to a ghost box and you just kind of cover your ears and it kind of muffles out things but then certain things will come through very strong yeah and you'll hear those things and i think that that's kind of uh the same kind of effect but i know that there were several things that came through um that i couldn't make out but i know that uh, uh it seems that other people were yes. able to <sighs> yeah. So when you, because when you're doing, generally when you're doing sessions, are you recording them also, like with a recorder, digital recorder? Um, I typically go live on Facebook. Right. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> because when I generally when I'm going live on Facebook, I'm going to also do a separate recorder just to to hear back. But my I guess what I'm wondering about, like I hear so many people do so many things to manipulate the recording to get to understand what's being said. And in my mind, I feel like that sometimes that goes a little too far. If I, I could almost feel like if you can't hear it after doing a couple things, then perhaps there isn't anything there to begin with. Yeah, I agree with that. And I also um, think that um, I don't even honestly, I don't even like the idea of manipulating audio or enhancing the audio at all, because um, one, it changes the audio. And two, um, you know, how do we know that that's all you did? Right. Exactly. Uh, But I think um, the the reason I just do live feeds is because I don't really have the time to, like, go through audio recordings and you know, try to figure that out. Like I will uh, do the session live and get what I get live. And then, um, you know, I have people that will watch these videos and uh, tell me if something significant came through that I missed uh, or, um, but to be honest, I don't really do a whole lot of sessions from my house. You know, like I don't really, um, I don't just do sessions like that. Typically I'm out at at a location. I mean, I have five that, it's kind of like our playground, you know, we can just kind of go whenever and do whatever. Um, so, I mean, I have the ability to do that. Unlike a lot of people. And I know that that's like, I don't know. I just, I, I'm not, I don't have the time or the, uh, I guess, I don't know. I just don't feel like I want to do it. <laughs> well, and that, yeah. No, I mean, I, I personally, it's very rare now that I go back and listen to the recordings um other people do like you i have some friends who will listen to stuff and they pull out stuff but and i'll send them the raw recording of uh from the digital recorder post from the facebook feed mm-hmm. uh, and they'll they'll listen but uh sometimes it's just i mean it's a very time consuming thing to do it's just as simple as that yeah and i mean unless i'm doing it for something specific like um i mean there have been times where you know i know that the session was just unbelievable so i will go back and listen to it and you know caption it out or whatever but i don't i don't mess with the audio and i just pull from the video itself like i don't even touch it just like oh well this is the raw audio let me just put some captions on it and then when you listen to it on the video it's like holy shit it did say that yeah, no, and and I tend to be like I'll listen, I'll I'll go through it three times, like a section that I think is interesting. If I don't get it by the third time, and I don't manipulate either, if I don't get it, then it's like it's done for me. Yeah, yeah, just uh, like I don't, I don't know. 
I guess I, I get the idea of doing um, like amplifying uh, like EVPs. Like that's one thing. Um, but like, I don't know when you start playing ghost box bag and a lot of people will do like the noise gate noise reduction on it. will remove the static pops in the background mm -hmm. and stuff. And it's like, no, I don't know because that's like, what are you taking away exactly? Because yeah. what if you're taking away something that was important? Just right. because you didn't want to hear all the static. I mean, well, and that's just it. I don't. I. I. I mean, maybe you all do, but I don't know what it takes for spirit to to speak through a box. You know, right. speaking, but it's just like you. You might be taking away their voice or part of their voice. Well, um, right. In, in my experience, like I've had, like I've had sessions where I've heard full sentences in a whisper over the static of FM. Yes. You know, and I know that that is, you know, not common, but like I, I've seen, I've heard it happen. I've like experienced that a number of times. And so now I'm to the point where I don't even want to get rid of any of the static nope. because sometimes those voices are louder than the radio. Yeah, we get it. We get that quite a bit, to be very honest. When we do these, it's just, and where everyone's just like, we hear it, we hear something, but we don't know what it is. I mean, but it's clearly almost like sometimes spirits are talking with each other through right you know you just don't know you know and i've always i've always wondered you know and i know this is kind of a little bit off topic but um you know when you talk about residual haunting right mm -hmm. like is it possible to put a ghost box in the exact spot where something happened and be able to capture the audio of that uh like the stone tape theory thing like, is it be able to hear the audio of what's happening in that moment, even though it's not intelligent? Like, is it possible to capture that moment audibly through a ghost box if you just set one in the spot where a murder happened or something? Well, uh, our friend Char Savoy, uh, she was on a, we did a, a thing called Paranormal Reveal where we went through her first time going at, to Villisca. And she ended up, uh, we played some recordings that sounded like uh, children screaming. Um, and, and there's some really, some really difficult things to hear, actually. And it's like, that's what we all thought it could possibly have been, was some sort of residual uh, recording. Or is it spirit wanting us to hear it? And to be fair, though, that wasn't through Spirit Box. That was actually an EVP. Um, but I mean, this I get the concept is still the same. And yeah. the situation is, I mean, like that lends to the question because if a spirit wants you to hear it, then it's not necessarily residual, it would be intelligent in a way. It's like an intelligent spirit manipulating it so that you hear the residual energy. But how would you know one way or the other? Like, right, you right, know, yeah. I mean, that's us conjecturing, you know, uh, you know, but yeah, going down the rabbit hole, man. That's what that's what that's what happens in these things. So oh, I love it. That's what keeps me going, man. It's just like, where's the rabbit? You know, the rabbit hole doesn't seem to ever end. No, you, you find you get six more questions from this instance, and then those six questions lead to like thirty other questions, and like the how, the the what, the, the why, the you know all this stuff. And I think a lot of people will search for the who. Uh, the, the what you know like they'll mm -hmm. go through they'll try to figure out who's here why are you here um how long have you been here kind of deal but um i try i'm like looking at the how like how is this happening i mean we make the assumption that they're there we make the assumption that they are able to communicate with us or whatever but how like how is that possible how are they able to do this how can we make it easier for them um like, you know, what do we got to do to cross the bridge completely? But uh, I think it's personally, I think it's all about the frequencies. I think that it's going to be a combination of frequencies, kind of like a like a code lock, sure. or like one of those bike locks. Well, that have a lock almost, yeah. Yeah. Like that's personally how I feel. Like I think sure. we just got to find the right combination of frequencies from whatever, uh, you know, uh, type of frequency that is whether it's vibrational sound light whatever um i think that it do we have to combine certain ones and just find that right exact combination to lift the veil completely to open that gate 
Um, I don't know, man. That's well, it, well, and as Christy says, and I, I concur with this, I always wonder if this is what Christy says. I always wonder if they are on the other side struggling to reach us just as hard as we try to reach them. What is the thing that's blocking that connection? I mean, to me, that just seems to make sense that mm -hmm. why, I mean, if, if it was easy, then our loved ones, you pr presumably our loved ones would be all about talking with us or whatever else. But um, it's yeah, interesting. I think that um, in our timeline and the way that we are technologically and spiritually right now, I don't think we have the capabilities. However, I think that, you know, a lot of, we need to somehow get in touch with our ancient roots, um, try to figure out why um, ancient peoples believed what they believed. And obviously they were able to sense things about our, our earth, our universe that, you know, we don't have any concept of today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like how are they able to pick up on an asteroid out in the middle of the desert or a big rock that has huge, crazy magnetic properties? They're able to sense that. But like we as humans now could not because we've been so desensitized by technology and everything else. Um, you know, I think all of that plays a factor into connecting to the spirit world. And then we, you know, we get, I think, like I said, we got to try to figure out what combination of frequencies um, because everything that exists has some kind of frequency, has some kind of vibrational frequency, pattern, whatever. And I mean, that's not even getting into the whole dark matter and dark energy type deal. Because I mean, you know, when you think about dark matter, dark matter supposedly, in theory, fills the void. It's everything that keeps everything in place. Like the universe is in place because of dark matter. And it's a constantly expanding because of dark. There's a lot of different theories about it. But, you know, what if the dark matter is like how they like what they are you know it's because we are physical light matter right mm -hmm. so if that's dark matter i mean is that a possible thing or are they on the fourth dimension where they can hear and see us but we can't you know what i mean i love getting man i'm sorry i love getting into the rabbit oh, hole. that's that's really interesting you know we could we could we could talk another you know 10 hours just on yeah. Um, what Christy is what Christy is saying though, she's putting you in in charge. Uh, keep on pushing to find out how to get there. Put that on your list behind the defibrillator box. Okay, let's get the defibrillator box made first. And I need a defibrillator, Christy. <laughs> uh, Give me a defibrillator. I'll see what I can do. Why don't I'll we do uh, the Haltes and KD <laughs> and J on it? We'll do it all together. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Why don't we call it what why don't we call it a night tonight? Um, do you want to come back on some point and, and and just chat more about this? Absolutely, man. Let's do it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm always up this late. Um, and especially like, you know, during the week, I'm always up this late. And you know, I'm so like I get off of work probably around eleven at night, typically. Um, I didn't go in tonight, but uh, yeah, like on a normal night I get off at eleven Eastern. So that's like 10 o'clock your time. But if I work a little fast, I could get off a little earlier. We can make it happen again. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, you know, I mean, because right now I'm, I, it looks like I'm going to pass away here any second. So you can use the box to reach out to me a little bit later. <laughs> um, so let's do that. Uh, a lot of people are very happy. They enjoyed tonight. They enjoyed you being on. Thank you, Austin, so very much for being on. Um, well, I appreciate it, man. I really do. And uh, I do want to make a shout out to everybody here and say, if any of us are going to pass away in the next couple of days, please, hopefully not. But if anybody does, every single one of us should have a mission to come through the boxes and talk to us and tell us what it's like on the other side. Every single person in this field should make those plans. Absolutely. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right about that. So, folks, thank you very much. I am going to be back on Sunday, uh, the July 3rd. We're going to reach out to loved ones. Austin, thank you so, so very much for joining in with us tonight. Oh, man, it was my pleasure. It was a great time. And uh, we'll see you all in a week. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.